Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and a little while ago I made a video about how to transfer UVs between any kind of geometry uh, using geometry nodes, and in that video I transferred UVs from a low poly mesh into a retopologized high poly mesh, and then a little while after that a guy named Royal Skies contacted me and asked if you could do that in reverse and transfer the UVs from a high poly object to the low poly object. And I was like, well, there, there might be some limitations, but theoretically, yes, that should work. So I ended up making it into its own modifier that I added to my geometry node assets. And he then made a video about it. Um, and so a lot of you came over here from his channel. So thank you for doing that. Welcome. Um, because of that video, uh, that particular modifier or node group got a lot more attention than I initially anticipated and so I wanted to make uh, another follow-up video um, showing how some more improvements could be added to that node group because it does have some limitations so I want to cover what the limitations are um, some ways to work around them and some improvements that I will be adding into the node in the future so as you can see here, I've set up sort of two example cases of the problem. Um, so these are the source objects, and then this is the one I'm transferring to. And you can see that in both cases, the transfer has crazy stretching happening. So I'm going to explain why that's happening. They both stem from the same sort of root problem. And unfortunately, there's not just a generic way to solve that problem, but I'm going to talk about some ways to do it. So what is the problem? Well, if we look at the UV map on this object here, you can see that the UVs are just a simple loop. They loop around like this, and there's a seam right here. Um, so because of that, when I, in the node group, evaluate where the seams are, we find that this edge is a seam. And then when we're trying to determine which group of faces to use to sample from, um, it looks at this one and says, oh, that's group one. And then it looks at, at the face on this side of the edge and is like, oh, that's also group one because they're all in the same island. And so since they're all in the same island, it doesn't separate them into different groups, which means that they end up sampling or they can end up sampling from the wrong face corners. And then you get the stretching at the seam. Um, I, so one way for the simple case that we could solve that is if you saw the very first video I made about transferring UVs, that was when the mesh had the same topology. And the solution for that simple case was to scale the positions of the face corners slightly towards the center of the face. And so if we apply that same strategy to our more complex method here where we're splitting the UVs into groups, we can take the position, evaluate it on the domain of the face, and then mix you know, 0.9999% of the original position with just the tiniest bit of the face to move it towards the center and use that as our sample position. And for the simple case, that will solve it because it pulls this vertex back from the edge. But again, this is primarily going to work well when the topology of your two objects line up perfectly. So that's incorporating the simple solution into our more complex one so that both cases will work. So you can see that that worked in this one, but uh, over here it did not work. And the reason it didn't work over here is because I've also put a perturb modifier on here, which moves the vertices in random directions. And so since they now don't line up perfectly, that tiny amount of scaling isn't enough to actually fix the problem. So we need to um, create groups in a different way. And so in this case, we would have to actually separate the UVs. So to make that simpler, but another improvement we could make is to go into the get UV seams and decrease this epsilon so that the amount we have to move the UVs to separate them is less. So I thought the easiest way to do this would be to put it into a divide node. And we can just divide, say, 0.1 by 1,000 or something to make a very, very small number. And we'll use that as our epsilon, so that doesn't change anything yet. But then in our source UVs here, we can see that... This UV map here, the top and the bottom, I just attached the top and the bottom of the cylinder to this mesh. But if we select that and press Y to separate it and move it ever so slightly away, then that will create a separate island there. And the same for the top. And now that fixes the top and the bottom islands. But because this is a loop, we have the same problem that we saw over here. So this is all the middle part of the cylinder is all one island with the same ID. And so on either side of the seam, uh, from the modifier's perspective, it's like that seam doesn't exist. In order to fix that, um, what we'd have to do is select half of this 
UV island here, split it, and just pull it ever so slightly away. And now you can see our UVs, there's technically a very tiny difference here, like a sub-pixel sized offset there. But um, otherwise, the UVs remain unchanged, and we've fixed that stretching on the transfer. So hopefully that clarifies a bit um, about some of the limitations of the transfer group and some ways to solve some of the problems that you might encounter um, when transferring, especially on geometry with few numbers of islands and simple UV layouts uh, where the topology doesn't match up properly. That seemed to create the most issues with stretching. Of course, the other thing you could do if you do have that stretching is you could just apply the modifier and then manually edit the UVs. You could like pin everything except the stretched area and then unwrap it. That would be another way to fix it um, if you don't want to edit the UVs on the source object for some reason. For example, if you've like baked textures on the source object and you need the, the UV islands to line up exactly on the texture and you don't want to edit the UVs there, then um, just leaving the stretching in but applying the modifier and then making edits to the UVs to fix the areas that are stretched could be an option. Um, but yeah, hopefully it, the modifier can get you close to a good result. Um, if you have any questions, anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments. I do have a Discord server that you're welcome to join. And if you want more information about any of the tools that I've made, uh, please check out my website. There's tons of information over there about all of that. Um, but otherwise, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.